Hello, and welcome back to The Ultimate Flex, a free flexibility, strength, balance, and body awareness course brought to you by Shelly Flex Athletics. I'm Shelly Airy, and through my online handstand, flexibility, and contortion coaching program, FlexEd, I help people to achieve skills they never dreamed to be possible. The Ultimate Flex was created to ignite a fire within you to pursue advanced body movement and skills you never dreamed were possible for you. And it gets pretty addicting, so I hope you're ready for the ride. If your pursuit of this mastery leads you back to me for a more personalized coaching, I would truly love that. But even if it doesn't, I'm honored to have been even a small part of your journey. In the last video, we went over some of my favorite drills and exercises for building body awareness for inversions. Now we're going to get upside down. Let's dive on in. So in this next video, what we're going to be working on is getting you upside down for the first time ever. And then we're gonna go all the way up into actually kicking up into your handstand. So I'm pretty excited about this video. First, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get two chairs. And this is for people that have never been upside down, but it's also a really great tool to use for understanding the alignment in a tuck handstand or a straddle or transitioning between shapes or, or anything like that. So what you'll wanna do you have your two chairs set up. They're gonna be about shoulder width apart. And then you also wanna set up a freestanding mirror or you know, a mirror that you can set against the wall, but a full length mirror so that you can turn your head to the side and actually see what your body is doing while you're upside down. So what you'll wanna do, the chairs are against the wall. Um, my walls are, are all marked up from me doing handstands up against them all the time. If you don't want to mark up your walls, make sure you put a towel or something there first so that you don't scuff them up. You're going to put your head in between the chairs and your shoulders are going to be elevated on the chairs. Then you're going to place your hands on the legs and what you want to do is you want to roll up so you're in this little tuck A position. You can turn your head to the side so you can see yourself in the mirror that you set up. And notice that you want your hips behind your shoulders. The reason for that is you have the weight of your legs in front of you, so you have to counter that weight by sending your hips backwards. From here, you can start to straighten your legs out in front, or you can sweep your legs out to the side. Start playing around with the different body positions that you can make here. And notice how, depending on where your legs are, your hips have to move to keep you centered on balance. So this exercise is really great uh, because it doesn't um, put any impact on your cervical spine, unlike a headstand, for example, that tends to be a lot of compression. This is really, really nice because it buys you a lot of time. You can see your form, doesn't give you any compression. Um, it's really great. Next, what we're going to do is start to feel what it feels like to have all of your body weight on your hands. Now, this is actually a more difficult exercise than the handstand itself. However, it's going to really help you to understand how to get your hips over your shoulders. And what you're gonna be doing, I have a yoga ball here, and you're going to be putting your feet on the yoga ball and then sliding your hips backwards. If you do not have a yoga ball, any high surface, like a table or a countertop, would be ideal. Anything, even this yoga ball is actually lower than I would like, so if you have something that you can elevate it on, so that when you are in your seven position or your, your hips back, that your feet are pretty much at horizontal or maybe even a little bit higher. It's gonna really be a lot easier to help you understand how to pull the hips back. I also really, really love this exercise for when you're trying to learn how to do a tuck handstand or a straddle or a seven or even press handstands. So this drill has a lot of great benefits. So what you're going to be doing is starting out in a push-up position. So notice that I started with my hands on the floor and then I put my feet up onto the ball. Okay, I'm gonna lower my hips down. I'm in this push-up position. It's also a great core stability exercise. So it's got a lot of benefits here. You're gonna lean your shoulders forward just a little bit and then you're gonna push down into your feet, pull your hips back, simultaneously pulling your chest towards the ball. So notice here I have almost all of my weight on my hands. Then you're gonna go back down to that push-up position. Sending the hips backwards, shoulders come back, or shoulders come underneath at the same time. Do a few of those so you can start to really understand that hips pulling back sensation 
pulling the shoulders underneath simultaneously. Next, what you'll want to do is figure out which leg is your dominant leg. This is gonna be really important because when you're kicking up into your handstand, you'll want to step forward on the same leg every single time and come back down on the same leg every single time. You'll also want to know which leg is your dominant leg because once we start to work on cartwheeling out of your handstand, you'll want to cartwheel out the same direction each time. So what that looks like, you're gonna step forward on one leg arms up by your ears, and you're gonna be pivoting around your hip. So you're gonna be standing on this one leg and tipping down and standing back up. Arms are gonna start up by your ears, you're gonna lunge, keeping that front leg bent, then forward, place your hands flat on the floor. Your back leg is really extended, you're pointing through that back toe, eyes are on the floor, and you're gonna stand back up. Keeping the front leg bent the whole time, Notice that this all stays in a straight line. Do that five to 10 times per leg. So you're really, really confident as to which leg feels more comfortable. And then from there, then we can start to work on kicking up to your handstand. For learning a handstand, it's one of my all time favorite drills is doing a handstand in a hallway. So what's really great about this is you can walk up the wall in front of you and then you also have the wall behind you so you have that security. Plus you also can work on playing around with the balance. You can put a mirror off to the side and work on your alignment. It's a really, really great tool both for total beginners but then also to like help you hold your handstand for a long period of time or even transition into like a tuck or different shapes like that all while um, having the walls to help you with the balance. So. What we're gonna really be focusing on right now is just getting the sensation of being all the way upside down and then even going to the wall behind you, which means you'll go a little bit past vertical, just so you start to get used to that sensation. You're going to start with your hands in the middle of the hallway, so in between the two walls. And depending on how wide your hallway is, it might be a little bit tricky to try to get up onto the wall. From here, turning your head so you can look at your alignment. You're gonna push up really tall in the shoulders and get those hips behind you. You're gonna bring one leg up and that's when I start to squeeze my butt so I'm in this nice straight line. My ribs are pulled in, I'm pushing up really, really tall. And I'm gonna just go ahead and place my foot on the wall behind me and take the second leg off, okay? And I'm just gonna kind of work back and forth here so I can start to get used to the sensation of being off the wall. From here, you can start to play around a little bit more with the balance itself. You can keep your legs split. That'll be easier to find the balance, but just kind of starting to get used to what it feels like to be all the way upside down. And then you can kind of just cartwheel down to the floor to come out of your handstand. Now we're going to work on kicking up to the wall. So we're gonna take what we learned from the hallway drill. You're gonna take what you learned from stepping forward on that one leg and you're also gonna be taking what you learn from the sliding up using the ball or your countertop or whatever. So I like to start with my hands on the floor, bending my front leg and lifting my back leg already. Now, a lot of people think that um, when you get up into a handstand that you kick up into the handstand, but what you're actually doing is you're gonna push off of the bottom leg and try to get your hips up and over. Notice that you're really gonna be hinging from the shoulder. So you're gonna be pushing into the bottom leg, getting your hips up. And notice that all of this, from my shoulder all the way down to my leg, stays in a straight line. So I'm not trying to round and roll up, I'm staying in a straight line and hinging from my shoulder. Pushing up and at the same time, I don't leave my shoulders forward, I push them underneath. Notice I'm not picking up this leg, throwing it up or anything. I'm actually leaving it down until I find the wall. Then I bring that second leg up. Okay, when I come back down, I'm bringing that leg down as far as I can go, and then I'm placing it back on the floor. So, I stay down on the floor in between your hands. Back leg is lifted. You're gonna push into that bottom leg, find the wall, bring the second leg up, opening up in the shoulders. First leg comes down. Lean the shoulders forward, catch yourself on your foot. Up next, we've got the vital element to your handstand practice that will allow you to finally conquer your fear of falling so you can ditch the wall and unlock your freestanding handstand. 
I'll see you in the next video.